Today we are going to see about enamel. Where we all know enamel is a ectodermal derived structure produced by ameloblast as this was discussed in our last video. And let us see where the other structures and the physical property and chemical property of enamel as it follows. It is a protective covering of the tooth and it is high content of mineral salts along with a crystalline arrangement makes the enamel the hardest calcified tissue in the human body. This property of enamel enables it to withstand the mechanical forces applied during mastication. So basically what we know about enamel. Enamel is thick, enamel is hard and the color of the enamel. All these things are so common that any of them will know. But let us see all of these in detail as it follows as physical property. Thickness where the enamel thickness is not even throughout the crown where it is thicker in the cusp of the molar and premolar reaching up to maximum of 2 to 2.5 mm and in cervical region it is almost thin down to a knife edge and hardness and density of the enamel varies in different part of the crown the hardness and density decreases from the surface of the enamel to the dentino enamel junction and from the cuspal or incisal region to the cervical margin the color of the enamel varies from light yellow to grayish white as the color depends on the translucency of the enamel if it is translucent and it exhibits yellow color as it reflects the color of the dentin. The cervical area appears slightly yellow even in grayish white teeth as a result of thinner enamel layer in the cervical region. Do you all know the enamel is a semi permeable membrane? Yes, the permeability of the enamel has been demonstrated by radioactive traces and certain dyes that enamel acts like a semi permeable membrane allowing complete or partial passage of certain molecules. The permeability of the enamel is a result of the presence of cracks and microscopic spaces on the surface of enamel. We all know enamel is the strongest part but what it is made up of? The enamel is made up of 96% inorganic material and 4% organic matter and water. The organic matrix of enamel is made up of two types of non-collagenous protein. They are amylogenesis and non-amylogenesis. The inorganic components of enamel are hydroxyapatite crystals which are hexagonal in cross section and have the following approximate composition that is calcium 37%, sodium 0.5%, Magnesium 0.5%, Phosphate 55.5%, Carbonate 3.5%. These hydroxyapatite crystals are arranged to form enamel rods or prisms. As we said before, water is present along with the organic matter and water is present in enamel in the following two physical phases. Loosely bounded form of water and strongly bonded form as a part of apatite crystals. So, so far we have seen the physical properties and chemical properties. Let us now go into the structural properties of enamel. The structural properties where the studies with the electron microscope reveals that the enamel rods have a keyhole or pedal shaped pattern with a rounded head and a narrow tail region. The rod measures about 4 to 5 nm in breadth and 9 nm in length. Many patterns are observed regarding the arrangement of rods but usually they arrange with their head portion near the occlusal or the incisal surface and their tail portion pointing cervically. The enamel rods have a crystalline structure that allows light to pass through them. 
longitudinal ground section of enamel seen under a light microscope show that each enamel rod is composed of a series of segments separated by lines giving it a striated appearance these striations cross the enamel rods at interval of about 4 nm each striation is thought to represent a rest phase during the formation of the enamel these striations are more pronounced in sections that have been etched with dilute acid orientation of enamel rods the general orientation of enamel rods is perpendicular to the dentin surface in deciduous tooth the enamel rods lie in a horizontal plane in the cervical and middle third they gradually become more oblique in the incisal and occlusal third and are almost vertical in the incisal edge or the cusp tip in the permanent teeth the arrangement is similar to deciduous teeth in the occlusal and middle third in the cervical third the enamel rod show a root ward inclination or pass outwards hunter shringer band where it is seen as alternating light and dark band of varying width when longitudinal ground sections of the enamel are viewed under oblique reflected light they are seen in the inner two third of the enamel thickness and disappear as the outer part of the enamel is approached it has been suggested that these alternating light and dark bands may represent portions of enamel having variations in calcification differing slightly in their permeability or having different organic material content incremental lines of regius where the striations are thought to represent a rest phase during the formation of the enamel as we discussed before which are seen as series of dark lines seen in enamel when the ground section of tooth are observed in longitudinal cross section these are seen extended from the dentino enamel junction to the outer surface of the tooth in an upward and outward direction they are more numerous and close together in the cervical region in cross section they appear as concentric circles similar to the growth rings seen on the cut surface of a tree trunk perkimata what it is a transverse wave like grooves lying parallel to each other and to the cemento enamel junction and runs circumferentially across the surface of the crown these are seen in the region where the incremental lines of regius reach the outer surface of the enamel and they are thought to be the external manifestation of the lines of regius they are more in number in the cervical region and can be demonstrated by rubbing graphite on the surface of the tooth enamel caps and brooches where the enamel surface is not even and shows pits and elevations the pits are about 1 to 1.5 nm in depth and represents the ends of the ameloblasts lost after the formation of enamel The elevations occurs as a result of deposition of enamel and debris on the enamel organ. Smaller elevations are called enamel caps which measures about 10 to 15 nm in width and larger elevations are called enamel brooches which measures about 30 to 15 nm in width. Let us now see the enamel lamellae and cracks where the enamel lamellae are thin sheet like structure arranged in longitudinal and radial direction of tooth best demonstrated in horizontal sections they extend from the surface of the enamel to the DEJ and some may even reach the dentin Enamel lamellae are formed due to severe disturbance causing cracks in the newly formed enamel and are filled with organic matter. 
It is suggested that an enamel lamellae can be a weak site providing a pathway for bacteria to enter and cause caries. Enamel lamellae can be differentiated into three types, type A, type B and type C. Type A enamel lamellae are poorly calcified rod segments that occurs when a section of enamel rods fail to calcify when occlusal forces are applied on it. While crossing a plane of tension, type B contain degenerated cells only and are defects in enamel filled with organic material. Type C enamel lamellae occurs in erupted tooth where the cracks are filled with organic matter from the connective tissue surrounding the teeth or the saliva. Cementum may be formed in these lamellae. Type A enamel lamellae are restricted to enamel while type B and C may extend up to the dentin. Enamel turf are thin wavy ribbon like structures arising from the DEJ. They reach a short distance into the enamel usually up to one third of the thickness. When thick ground sections are viewed under low magnification, enamel turfs lying in different planes and curving in different directions are projected in one plane making them appear like a tuft of grass, hence the name. However. They do not arise from a single stem as it appears. These structures are arranged in longitudinal direction and hence best seen in horizontal or transverse section. Like the enamel lamellae, these structures are made up of hypocalcified enamel rods and have more organic component in them. Enamel tufts are much more numerous than enamel lamellae and both these structures persist even after decalcification. The dentino enamel junction. The dentinal surface of enamel is formed by a series of dome shaped elevations arranged closely fitting into the shallow depressions of the dentin. In sections the DEJ appears as a scalloped line and not straight line. This irregular shape of the junction helps strengthen the union between the enamel and dentin and prevents shearing of the enamel during function. Enamel spindle. In some areas, the odontoblastic processes from the dentin pass across the DEJ into the enamel for a short distance. These processes may be pointed or rounded or may have a noticeable thickened end in which case they are known as enamel spindles. The greatest numbers of enamel spindles are found in the region of cusps. In ground section, the organic structure of spindle disintegrates and is replaced by air and thus enamel spindles appear dark in transmitted light. Thank you all for watching this video. If you want me to discuss any other topic, please leave it in the comment box. And please do like, share and subscribe for more videos.